Good evening and welcome to the API's presentation, Eye on Government, where we bring you the latest on government's plans, programs, policies and projects. I am Nadia Slater. Coming up this evening, developmental works continue throughout the country. This evening we visit Mario Hua. The Milton Cato Memorial Hospital receives equipment as part of a donation. The NTRC prepares to launch its I-Square competition 2020. The details of those stories coming up. But first, let's go to our news desk and Janice St. Philip. Good evening. This is News Watch. I am Janice St. Philip. With the reopening of schools less than five days away, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzales says the wearing of masks to school is part of the protocol to ensure the nation's children's safety in the prevention of the transmission of COVID-19. The Prime Minister spoke of homes and schools as bubbles. Therefore, it is not until the student leaves home that a mask is worn as protective gear. When the children get to school, it is not recommended that they wear masks on the school premises. The aim is to give every student in the primary, secondary, post-secondary, should get from the, from the schools at least two and possibly three masks, including the teachers because it's a, it's a lot, and these are reusable masks. Temperature checks and sanitization practices will also be observed. As St. Vincent and the Grenadines prepares for general elections, the National Broadcasting Corporation, NBC, brought media personnel in St. Vincent and the Grenadines up to speed on protocols relating to election coverage through a one-day seminar. The training, held via Zoom, had over 40 participants and was titled Elections Coverage for Journalists of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Media Institute of the Caribbean hosted the webinar on Tuesday, September 1st, 2020. The aim of the training was to enhance reporting skills of journalists covering national elections. Journalists were reminded of the core tenets of accuracy, impartiality, and good judgment. Renowned Trinidadian journalist and poet Wesley Gibbons was the main presenter with contributions from President of the Trinidad and Tobago Publishers and Broadcasters Association, Kiran Maharaj, and political commentator Peter Richards. Supervisor of Elections, Mrs. Dora James, was on hand to field questions in the webinar. The Roads, Buildings and General Services Authority, Braxa, has completed a concrete roadway in an area called Bajan Corner in Ashton Union Island. The project saw the construction of a 54-feet road and a 420-feet box drain. It was done at an estimated cost of 158,000 EC dollars. Meanwhile, work continues on the Ashton Main Road near the well. This involves the reconstruction of 652 feet of concrete road. It is being done at an estimated cost of 201,000 EC dollars. Work is expected to be completed by the end of September. 32 police officers have completed a basic development course geared towards achieving self-enhancement of skills in order to become more equipped police officers. The basic development training course was held at the Old Montrose Police Training School from July 6, 2020 to August 26, 2020. The program is designed for police officers who hold between one to five years of service. Assistant Commissioner of Police Leonard Fergus urged the police officers to maintain law and order at all times and to execute their duties fairly without fear or favour. Commissioner of Police Colin John, in his keynote address, gave the officers an account of his background and how he worked hard to achieve his goals. 
John encouraged the participants to work hard, stay focused and disciplined in order to propel themselves and the organization. One of the participants, PC Sylvain Lavier, was specially mentioned as she received the award for the most outstanding police officer on the training course. The Cabinet of St. Vincent and the Grenadines has endorsed the commencement of operations of the first cannabis pharmacy in the country. Consequently, this follows the approval of the first cannabis dispensing license. The implication is that the company can now acquire and dispense medicinal cannabis products legally in the country. The company, Green Lava SVG Inc., was among the first entities to receive the approval of Cabinet for a medicinal cannabis license on July 10, 2019. Green Lava officially launched operations on November 15, 2019. The company has a staff complement of over 20 persons involved in medicinal cannabis productions at its five acre farm in Queensbury, Vermont. Thanks for watching. This is News Watch. I am Janice St. Philip. Stay tuned as the API's Iron Government program continues with Nadia Slater. As we applaud the efforts of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment in managing the spread of COVID-19, we wish to remind you to follow all the protocols. Most importantly, practice proper hand washing, cover your cough and sneeze in the crook of your elbow, do not touch your face, wear a mask when in public or where it is not possible to practice social distancing. Call the COVID-19 hotline at 534-4325 if you're experiencing flu-like symptoms. Together, we can stop the spread of COVID-19. A message by the National Reconciliation Advisory Committee. Welcome back. Mario Coeur is the breadbasket of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and it's undergoing some major developmental work. Apart from a new early childhood centre, plans are on the way for a playing field in Evesham. The API's Cheryl McMillan has the details. Good evening. I'm happy to report to you on some of the projects ongoing in the Mario Coeur Valley at the moment. Just like to remind you that there are in the Marico constituency over 31 major projects that we have undertaken over the last few years. And these projects range from agriculture based, education, health, other infrastructure, including roads and bridges, the environment, disaster preparedness, among others. At the moment, we have a number of projects ongoing in different villages. As a matter of fact, all of these areas cover, touch all of the villages in the Mariaqua Valley. And you will know by now that we have about 18 villages that we can comfortably call villages, areas that communities that we can call villages. That, that spans that span the entire area of the Mariaqua Valley. Because of our geography, it is always difficult to keep things maintained. We are a water people. We have a lot of erosion, a lot of landslides. Uh, you have to go down into gullies, uh, climb hills. So the roads take a beating. And apart from the f that, we have a very moderate rainfall. Tonight, let me talk about, first of all, a few projects that we have nearing completion. First of all, I'll look at the Early Childhood Center at Richland Park. This is a very important project. In fact, it gives a fillip to the education revolution here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This government has been building early childhood centers throughout the country. We have about 11 of them. We have about another three to be to open coming coming next few weeks or so. I'm talking about the one at Bayabu. 
There's one at uh, Park Hill, and there's this one in Richland Park. We intend to name the one at Richland Park after a very important and generous woman who has gone to the great beyond, Mrs. Teresa Jack of Jack's Enterprises. This school, this center, will be opened very soon. It costs in the region of $1.1, $1.2 million, and it is about 90, 92% completed. We hope to open it soon. Why do we build these schools? Because early childhood, between, I think, uh, three to five years, that's one of the most important period of a child's life. And if we catch them this early, and we're able to mold them, and to put them on the right path. When they get into primary school and later on in secondary school, they would have been far advanced in terms of their learning abilities. So we thought it was necessary to put one in Richland Park, which and that is one of the largest villages in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It is certainly the largest village in the Marico Valley. And therefore, there is a great demand for this kind of um, childhood development center. So that, that's the... Richland Park Early Childhood Development Center, which will be part of the Richland Park Primary School. And as I said, we'll be naming it after a very important person from the community. Then we go over to Kare. Kare is easily the largest of the western villages of the Marakwa area. Of course, as I talk about the western villages, I'm talking about places like Collins and Evesham and uh, Riley and Kilbourne and career itself, and maybe some parts of Mount Pleasant. And uh, right now, we are doing a major development in terms of the roadway between the Collins Bridge and the Career Bridge. This is called the Career Village Road. And for some time, it has been in a state of disrepair. There are some dangerous bends, um, so we have to put retaining walls. Uh, etc. And, and they're working on these walls at the moment. A lot of it, a lot of work is being done at the moment. Uh, there was some stoppage to the project some time ago. It has recommenced and is going at a very good pace. I'm very pleased that sooner or later Career would have a very good roadway, and the motorists, the commuters, the, the the people in the community would be very pleased that we have a good roadway between the Collins Bridge and the Career Bridge. We call it from bridge to bridge. Uh, rehabilitation of this career village road. As we are in career, um, the career bridge, a very important landmark in that area of the constituency, very, very important. Um, it has been there for some time. It, is, it has undergone some wear and tear. Um, the river, which is, that is the upper reaches of the, of the Yambu River, we call it the Ford River, and uh, it joins the other two rivers in central Mesopotamia, then into the Yambu River down to the sea. And this is a very strong river, and it has caused some problems to, to, the, to the banks of the, of the river nearest to the bridge, and it was um, threatening the structure of the bridge itself. So we have done some work on that, over a million dollars work. Um, it is not finished. We're doing river defense on either side, and we're doing some shoring up of the bridge itself. Uh, this bridge, if it goes, if it doesn't function properly, it creates a problem in this particular part of the constituency. So it is very important that we do the work that we're doing here at the Career Bridge. So those are two very important projects we have at Career. Um, the, 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 that bridge and the village road itself. Uh, we have prioritized the, what we call the Career Mountain Road, or the Acres Mountain Road. Um, this is where the, most of the people in that area have lands, the farmers, and you know we are a farming community, Mariaqua is and 90% uh, of the people of Kare do some farming, even if they do other things, they do farming. And they've been finding it difficult to get their produce out or to get their inputs in uh, to their farms in that area. And we have prioritized that, and uh, soon I think I've been advised that they will be doing some work on that road at the moment. I've been hearing from the people, and they've been saying that it is really in a bad state. I've seen it myself, um, but we will be doing that very soon. In, in career. If you go further west um, into the village of Evesham, one of our oldest villages, is a very slim village we call it, um, running down from the Pansambi Hill straight down into Lakwa, uh, we have purchased 1.6 acres of land at Windsor. Windsor is that area where we have the cemetery, it is also the area where we have the, the clinic. 
the health center in Avisham, a very large, nice health center which was built there by um, Sister Gordon Miguel um, some time ago, and it acted as the as the center, the health center for the entire Maracua when we were doing work on the Levalatum Health Center down further around in Mesopotamia. So we have bought some lands adjacent to that for a playing field in the area. Um, those of you who are from Maracua would know that we have a playing field at Richland Park and we have one at Canaan. But because of the geography of the valley itself, it is difficult for people to move from one village to another in order to access these, these um, facilities. So what we've done, we've bought lands at Windsor in Evesham to service that particular area. Again, the Western villages, people who would benefit greatly were people from Riley, from, from Kilbourne, from Collins, from Carre in particular, and now, of course, um, by, from Evesham. Um, the people, the young people especially in Evesham, have been um, bombarding me with the demands that they need, they need a, a playing field in the area, and I have responded. And the, the government has been able to purchase the lands from the, the John's family and uh, we, we have it there ready for, um, for groundbreaking. As a matter of fact, um, the bulldozers are already on it working. Uh, the National Lottery has taken it over to do some work on it and uh, we are now cleaning it off and uh, trying to fill in some of the, the lower areas and cut down some of the higher areas. It is re relatively flat. Uh, it shouldn't take too much work and then we'll plant some grass on it and that the Evisham people can claim it as their own. So those are some of the major projects in that area that we, we have been, uh, been looking at and, and which are ongoing. Some of these started like two years ago. Um, there was some stoppage, for instance, at Sears. We have a very nice project going on there where the, the road has been, um, there's a lot of back wall, etc. We are widening the road at Sears, Sears Village. That's in that um, uh, steep ridge above central Mesopotamia. And it's a road that we can use, as I've said before on, the, on this forum, uh, we can use it as a bypass for, for Mesopotamia. And they are working on that at the moment. A lot of concrete work is being done there um, at Sears. Uh, also at Montreal, um, we try to finish the ring road that will go to Macmillan and then go around um, into the Montreal catchment area and out again past the Montreal Gardens and down back to Macmillan. Um, that, is, that has restarted. It stopped uh, for the same reason that the other um, projects stopped at, let's say, Sears and Carrere. They've all recommenced and we're very happy about that because we had a little scare. Uh, we thought that nothing would happen uh, very soon. But that has started, and I know the people of Sears are happy that it has restarted. And um, I'd just like to mention also work going on now at Majorca. Now that is, Majorca runs into Upper Mount Pleasant, uh, that long um, linear village uh, between Freeland and Majorca itself. And uh, in the Upper Mount Pleasant area, the road was, was very, very bad. And uh, we started a project there uh, two years ago. We had a problem, the contractor had to leave, then we got another contractor, and then we had a problem with getting aggregate, because that is a general problem throughout the country, the scarcity of aggregate, of asphalt and um, concrete, and they had to stop. And now um, I've been advised that they have restarted like two weeks now, and um, the, the bad areas they're dealing with first, and then later on they'll do the other areas. So Majorca, Mount Pleasant, I think that they'll be happy that we're doing this work at the moment. So a lot of work is being done in the valley. Um, people who go around the valley would see them. Um, and these are just a, f a few of them. We have other roads that we have done, like major roads, like the, that road above um, Ginger Village that, that we had to go through Belmont. It is now uh, there, beautiful um, roadway, realigned with new drainage, etc. Um, the roads done at, um, at Glenside, at Montague, at um, Cotton Ground, all over the valley. All over the valley we have been doing work and uh, the people of the valley have been very very happy that we have been able to do as much as we have been doing um, in terms of roads alone and, and other projects we have about 35 million dollars spent in the last four and a half years so I hope we get these done if the, if the weather is kind to us uh, we will be able to get most of these projects finished in, in, in soon time uh, very soon we'll have them finished and of course we move on to other things thank you
Welcome to Opportunity Calls, where we inform you on vacancies within the government service, opportunities for training, scholarships, and much more. Stay tuned as an opportunity might just be calling you. The Kingdom of Morocco, through the Moroccan Agency for International Cooperation, AMCI, has announced the 2020-2021 Morocco Scholarship Program call for applications. Students from the six independent OACS member states are invited to apply. 20 scholarships will be awarded to each participating OACS member state. Bachelor, Master, PhD scholarships are awarded for the duration of the study program. The language of study is French. Non-French speaking students will be required to pursue a French language program at the International Language Centre under this agency in Morocco. Scanned copies of completed application forms along with all necessary supporting documents should be submitted by September 30, 2020. For more information and application links, please visit our Facebook page at API SVG. Good morning everybody. Welcome to our staff meeting. We'll now have the minutes of the last meeting. <coughs> Miss Peters, you don't know it's bad manners to cough and don't cover your mouth. Well, listen, I have a common cold, and at some point, it is expected that I'm either going to cough or sneeze. So you all don't have to be that dramatic. But we don't know if it's cold or COVID. Some people like be wrong and strong. Imagine you cough and don't cover your mouth, and because people talk is a problem. Well, no wonder COVID spreading like wildfire across the world. None of you can give me all the virus in here, you know. Is that a practice good hygiene or I stay at home? I ain't able. Well, seeing that you know so much about proper hygiene, enlighten me now. What do you mean? It's common knowledge. If you have to cough or sneeze, you cover your mouth with a tissue or the cuff of your elbow so that the virus won't spread in the atmosphere. That's it. It's not rocket science. Okay, Miss Know It All. Now I know better, I will do better. Remember, it's not about who knows it all. Our health is a shared responsibility. For our next staff development session, I'm going to ask a medical doctor to discuss respiratory hygiene with us. So let's get back to our meeting. You're viewing a presentation of the Agency for Public Information. The Obstetrics and Gynecology Department of the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital is in a much better position to care for mother and fetus with a donation monitor. In the same vein, the hospital received several other pieces of equipment and care packages from Agents of Change, a non-governmental organization in Canada. In honor of the late surgeon and former Governor General of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Sir Frederick Ballantyne, a cardiotocography or a CTG fetal monitor was donated to the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology of the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. This machine, the one we had before, is not functioning well at the moment, as is expected with any machine if you have it for too long and then you have so much use of the machine, we always need to get replacement. And that's what's happening. We're getting a new machine here and we are grateful and we are thankful to Ron Kilios for the presentation of The handover took place at Maternity Ward A in the presence of Head of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Dr. Sherian Slater, so Frederick's daughter, Lauren McIntosh, and Deputy Hospital Administrator, Andrew Williams, among others. This is a CTG or cardiotocogram machine. It is used for the monitoring of the baby while the baby is developing within the mom. It helps to guide the physician as to when the baby is in stress, meaning that the baby needs to come out either by cesarean section or deliver by vaginal birth. It gives you good variability it gives you if the baby's heart rate is falling, 
when it is falling, if when the baby moves, the heart rate is, is down, and you know whenever anybody moves, the heart rate should go up. So we expect that if the baby is in trouble, when the baby moves, the heart rate, baby trying to conserve so it doesn't go up. So we expect to see accelerations. We don't expect to see deep decelerations, and we expect to see variability. So if, depending on that, the interpretation is made, and then we do intervention to save baby and to give mom a healthy baby home. Dr. Slater extended thanks to Ron Kilius, whom she described as a friend of the department, for his gift to the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. This machine is, was donated to us by Ron Kilius. Ron Kilius is a businessman in Canada. He loves St. Vincent. He has visited here on many occasions. And he has been a friend to the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology because we have gotten many... Um, do, um, dop, dop tone machines, which is another thing that we use to monitor babies during labor and delivery process and to monitor the fetal heart as well. So we have m different machines in order to monitor the baby. And in, in terms of this machine, Ron Killers, as I said before, was a very good friend of um, Dr. Ballantyne. So when he decided to donate this to the department, he wanted, he wanted to donate it in honor of Sir Frederick Ballantyne. And today, we have here with us Lauren McIntosh, who is a daughter of the late Frederick Valentine. And uh, um, Ron Killius in particular wanted us, wanted, donated this in honor of the late Sir Frederick Valentine. And we are indeed grateful for this. The late Governor General's daughter, Lauren McIntosh, said it is an honor that Ron Killius donated the CTG fetal monitor in memory of Sir Frederick. This afternoon, we're doing this handing over from Ron Kilias, as Dr. Slater indicated, and it's being dedicated in memory of my father, um, Sir Frederick Ballantyne. And I know certainly we are honored, one, that he's donating it in memory of Sir Frederick Ballantyne, and secondly, the people of St. Vincent, the Grenadines, and I know the maternity ward and, and all of the staff down here, we're extremely grateful because it's something that's needed and it's something that we're all going to benefit from at the end of the day. And my father was always key, not only as a physician, but in terms of always making sure the humanitarian aspect of his life and helping others where possible. So I know at this point, um, he's probably smiling in heaven, um, knowing that this donation is timely and needed at the, the hospital right now. So thank you to Mr. Kilius for this um, donation in memory of my dad. In accepting the CTG fetal monitor, Deputy Hospital Administrator, Andrew Williams expressed heartfelt thanks to Ron Kilius for his donation to the hospital. I'm here this afternoon on behalf of the members of staff of the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital and the administrator, especially the staff at the maternity A department. Um, being the recipient of an Eden CTG machine that would be used here on the ward for the purpose of um, patient care to our mothers. Um, we want to say a heartfelt thank you to, to Ms. Lauren McIntosh. Um, I understand that this machine has been donated on behalf of the recognition for us, so Frederick Ballantyne, who would have been um, a special um, doctor here at the hospital and former Governor General of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We want to assure you that this machine would go a long way into delivering the health care that we aspire to from day to day. Um, we understand as well that this machine is being handed over um, on behalf of Mr. Ron Kilias, and we are grateful as well for that. We say thank you again. After that handover, Deputy Hospital Administrator Williams moved to the atrium to receive yet another donation from Agents of Change, a faith-based NGO in Canada. Speaking at the handover, Nathaniel Sandy, an affiliate of Agents of Change, highlighted a number of persons integral in sourcing the items and making the donation possible. Mrs. Wendy Ager, out of Canada, and she has been working tiresomely in order to put these programs together and gathering all of this stuff that we have here today. And also we have Mr. Avi. D'Souza, 
one of the other uh, participants in gathering stuff from different places in order the medical stuff so that we can have some medical stuff here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We are here, um, uh, those stuff that we have here, the wheelchairs, and also some baby, uh, what do you call it, uh, baby product. We are here to just help the poor class of people here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Also, the Ministry of Health, we are here to make sure that each person throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines are being sufficed with all of these items that we are bringing into the country. Now, I look at um, Agents of Change as a ministry that reaches different parts of the world also to, to help people in different countries and meeting the needs of individuals. And we are here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines also doing the same in going around to the different communities and schools and also meeting those needs. Now, Pastor Abraham has been working, uh, Pastor um, Odneil James has been working very hard in also making this thing a possibility here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So here we have some chairs, um, the chairs behind us. Um, Mr. William, these are some of the stuff that we bring for the Ministry of Health that was sent to you all so that you can use for the children, um, the mothers when they're having their babies in the, um, in the, in the hospital. Deputy Hospital Administrator Andrew Williams, in accepting the donation, commented on the fact that the hospital is still receiving gifts even in the pandemic season. On behalf of the Administrator Grace Walters and members of staff of the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital and by large the Ministry of Health, I would like to say heartfelt thank you to the Agents of Change organization. Um, special thanks to Mr. James who have been coordinated coordinating with us on the ground, and to Pastor Sandy, Nathaniel Sandy, for handing over these worthwhile donations at this time. Especially in the um, pandemic season, um, we are still receiving gifts, and we say um, heartfelt thank you, you know, and we wish that God would continue to bless you and your organization, um, and we would like to extend that thank you to the mem members of your organization in the diaspora. Um, we want to assure you that these um, gifts would go a long way into adjusting the various needs that we have from time to time. We want to also, uh, also assure you that we want to put them into the best need that we can in involving the various departments in the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. In particular, the maternity ward where we would distribute the kits to the mothers even in, um, in the antenatal clinics, as we have as we um, already discussed. So once again, I continue to say thank you, as you would have been donating to us in the past, and we continue to look forward to donations like this in the coming future. Thank you again. Member of Agents of Change, Pastor Jonathan Abraham, said they are pleased to make the donation and that the organization helps in whatever way it can. This organization here in St. Vincent is doing a lot of work. We just completed last week, distributed over 150 reading glasses to the inmates of the prison, Belial and Kingston. We have also been distributing um, Bibles to the, and books to the inmates of the prison. And next month we are going to have dialogue with the Ministry of Education and the head teachers of different schools so that we will start distributing items to those schools. So, Angel of Change is doing a lot of work in St. Vincent and we are glad that we can help in whatever form we can to our Vincentian people. Both donations to the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital were handed over on Wednesday, 2nd September 2020 at Matt A. and the Atrium, respectively. Reporting for the Agency for Public Information, I am Keisha Woodley. Mommy, we're busy right now. Just take a snack from the counter. No, Mommy. Those have too much salt in it. Can I have a fruit, please? That's an interesting choice. But where did you learn that? The people on Hellwood. 
No, mommy, you want to kill me with high blood pressure? Help her say whatever salt you eat for the whole day should not be more than one teaspoon. And that is just for adults, you know. Foods may contain more salt than you think. Reduce salt intake. Children are the future, help them read, learn, grow. Early reading is the key, so help them read, learn, grow. Let's show them how much fun it is to read, learn, grow. So parents, you play your part. First and foremost, reading from so young is advantageous. Link with the teachers, working hand in hand is a must. Just 10 minutes of your child reading to you is a plus. Get fun books, make reading priority. When children read, they are able to learn. And the more they learn, the more they grow. So parents help the kids read, learn, grow. Reading is fun, kids have to know. Read, learn, grow. The children are the future. Help them read, learn, grow. So parents, you play your part. This message is brought to you by the OECS USAID Early Learners Program, funded by United States Agency for International Development. For more information, log on to www.oecs.org slash ELP. The NTRC's iCode 784 competition for 2020 will be officially launched next Tuesday. In this segment, the PI Hallerjohn speaks with NTRC official about the new and exciting development for this year's competition. Welcome to the studios of the API. With me today is Ria Lewis, consumer and public relations, public manager. relations at the NTRC. Welcome, Miss Lewis. Thank you for having me. Okay, so we're here to speak about the rebranded I Squared competition, which is now the I Code 784 competition. Yes. Now, this competition is well established. It has been established now for. Uh, this year would be the eighth year that we are hosting the competition. The eighth year. Yes. So yes. I think it's it's a lot of young people are very in tune and and, and aware of what it's about. Right, so this year, 2020, a big year for the entire world. What is special about this year? Okay, so this year, for the very first time, we will be having uh, one of the secondary school teams go to Barcelona with their mentor. So um, it's to attend an a, a event for startups hosted by four years from now and also the GSMA. Um, so in 2020, 2021, the winning two, two members from the winning team along with their mentor will be going to Spain, Barcelona to attend this event for startups. Well, provided that travel is not it's restricted allowed. at that time. Yes. Okay, so what is the focus of this year? What is the theme for this year? Our slogan this year is Code the Future. Code the Future. The future yes. Wonderful. And uh, let's take it back a little bit. Last year, I note that there was a very good entry um, that won for the secondary category. Do you all follow up with people who have won um, in sub well successive years, um, how they have progressed, um, what, uh, I guess, developments they would have had with the apps that they developed through the competition? Yes, we do. We actually have um, a Vinci, uh, two apps that were created from the iCode competition. One of them is the uh, Vinci Prices app. So this is where, you know, the supermarkets would normally post um, the prices for popular items in the newspaper. So you do not have to wait until they're posted once a week. You can actually go to the app and access this information. We also have another app called the Vinci Wi-Fi app, which is where um, you would be able to access the locations of all of the Vinci, um, the hotspots that NTRC provides in SVG. And just to recap, we provide them in schools, clinics, police stations, and other um, public places. Against the backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic, are you offering any additional incentive for people who develop apps um, around that particular um, area or I mean, I mean, it's a hot topic right now. Yeah. Currently, we don't have anything specific for COVID-related um, apps, but it would be an interesting um, target now that, you know, we have to, given we have to adapt to changing times, uh, I think a lot of creativity could come out of that. 
and your program is open to secondary students and an open category. Just take me through um, what those requirements are for each category. Okay, so the secondary uh, category, it is open to all secondary school students. You must have a mentor. Uh, secondary students can also enter into the open category. The open category is open to everyone under the age of 35 years old. So there, those are the two categories. You could enter in the second category or the open category. And you must enter with, it, with a team as well. So we have teams from minimum of two persons to the maximum of four persons. So just not only persons who are tech savvy, you know, you might have somebody who is, is good in accounting that could complement your app idea or your innovative idea, you can also add them to your team. So it's not just for persons who are good in coding, anybody could enter with a team. Okay, so what kind of support does the NTRC offer throughout the process um, for the competition? Do you offer any feedback um, along the way? Yes, we uh, have a presentation that is associate, well, assisted with Toastmasters. It's normally held after the preliminary event or the preliminary round of the competition. So the participants who advance from the preliminary rounds, they would be assisted with uh, tips that could uh, um, help them um, better their Streaming, mobile apps yeah. or their innovative ideas. And let's talk about registration now. When is registration open for this um, competition. So registration we launch on September the 8th which is next week Tuesday. Uh, this is on Facebook Live. One lucky viewer will also have the opportunity to win a Samsung Galaxy phone just by answering a question that would be asked by myself. Um, so you just have to tune in and listen and be the first person to respond. So September the 8th at 1230 on Facebook or Facebook page and TRC SVG is when we launch and registration is open from September the 8th to September the 25th, 2020. Okay. And the and you competition runs from? Uh, the competition runs from September the 8th to November the 10th. Okay. That's the final November the 10th. And you will register on our app. It's um, found on Google Play Store. And TRC iCode 784 is the name of the app. That's where we, um, we take the registration completely online for this year. Okay. Well, all in line with COVID and, yes. um, and uh, social distancing. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. So uh, you have it. All the information you need for this year's iCode 784 competition, be involved. It is going to be a good one. And, of course, a trip to Barcelona. Who wouldn't want that? Yes. Thank you. For some of us, it's a dream, and for others, it's a calling. But whatever it is that drives you to be innovative, whether you see the need to leave your mark in the sands of time, or you're eager to make tomorrow better for the next generation, whatever drives you to code, bring that to the NTRC iCode 784 competition, where all ideas and mobile app developments are welcome. Give yourself the chance to win $5,000 in the open category, or a trip to Barcelona, Spain, in the secondary mobile app category. Category to attend an event for startups hosted by the GSMA in March 2021. Your ideas deserve to be heard. And at the NTRC, we're willing to listen. So register on our iCode 784 app between September 8th to September 25th and code the future. Stop the spread of viral infections, including the flu and COVID-19, by practicing proper hand washing. Follow these simple steps. Remove all jewelry before washing hands. Wet hands using running water. Place liquid soap in hand. Circulate using rotational movements, interlace fingers, and repeat switching hands. Wash back of fingers, rotating them in the palms. Wash fingertips, rotating them in palms. Wash thumbs using rotational movements. Thoroughly wash hands down to the wrist. Rinse hands. Dry with clean tissue. Turn off tap using tissue. Use tissue to open door and discard in bin. A simple act can make a huge difference. 
Stop the spread of viral infections, including the flu and COVID-19, by practicing proper hand washing. This is a message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment. And finally on our program this evening, vendors prepare to enter new spacious and clean quarters as the government prepares to open a new market facility in Kingstown. The BI's Yinka Goodluck has the story. Traditional laissez-faire approach to commerce and maintenance in Kingstown has masked some of our capital's inherent charms and make it less navigable to pedestrians and motorists alike. In addition to an unregulated proliferation of informal vendors, many major commercial enterprises operate buildings that are in poor repair. The government, too, is guilty of the occasional neglect of official offices. In 2020, the government will continue to act on its pledge to clean up Kingston. We are currently preparing sites for the relocation of some vendors and finalizing designs for the improvement of public gathering spaces like Heritage Square. As is our practice, we will engage the informal sector fully about the implications of this cleanup. We also call on the business community to reconsider the lighting and upkeep of their facades in the interest of a cleaner, safer, and more welcoming Kingston. The mammoth task undertaken by the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in an effort to clean up capital Kingstown, restore access to sidewalks, and provide comfortable accommodations for vendors is being brought to fruition. This is being realized with the government acting on its pledge for the preparation of sites for the relocation of vendors. Hence, the construction and improvement of three facilities that will house some 254 vendors. The government is in its final stages of construction of the third facility as it moves towards the fulfillment of a promise to provide proper accommodations for some of the vendors in Kingstown. This third facility will house 82 of the Airmark 254 vendors. Contractor on the third facility, John Graves, on Monday, August 31, 2020, gave the Agency for Public Information a tour of the nearly completed facility and highlighted some of the benefits to be derived by not only vendors but persons using the facility. This is the third phase of the project, the Kingston Cleanup Project, and um, we are nearing completion as, as we can see. Uh, we are supposed to schedule, we schedule to finish at the end of September. We are doing the, the old meat market, and which is turned into a vegetable market. And at our right, we are doing a general public bathroom. Um, it's a pretty big conversion from what used to be there. But it will house, it's supposed to house all the vendors here, there, and the general public around right Kingston. At this phase at the, at the project, we have um, stalls for 254 people. At this location, we have 82. At the, oh, at the, the temporary market, that we, used to be a temporary market, there's 73. And up at the customs building, um, we have um, 99. Um, this, right now, as I said, scheduled, everything wrong here is scheduled to be finished at the end of September. The API's camera caught up with business persons in the vicinity of the facility and some vendors who are anticipating the completion and official opening of the facilities. I'm the owner for the shop, and it's a very good thing that Ralph has done, clean up the shop for me, please. But you could have do it a little bit more earlier in the movie. Alright? So it's very good. And hope you could do other more shops in the market that other people could feel just like me too also. I am happy about it. Because when the rain comes here, all the time after they put up something, and right now right there, I'm wetting down. All my foot them swelling, so I'm very glad about it. And we all vendors are happy to get in, into our new market. We cannot wait to get in because the rain is wetting us and the sun is burning. So may God bless Honorable Rightful Dr. Gonzal for preparing for us. And we are happy 
Well, the market is a good idea because you know, when rain comes in, you have to be running, running and covering down. So if it's in the market, it's comfortable. So I think it's a good idea. So I'm looking forward to going inside there for a long time. We want to see the town looking nice and clean and hope they go in there and stay inside there and we keep the town clean. So when you support the vendors? I am a vendor. Oh, a vendor. Yeah, I watch up the road. Yes, so everybody must go get the way that the funniness and let me keep the place clean and nice. For the API, I am Yinka Goodluck. The public is asked to take note of the following announcement. Public assistance for the month of September 2020 will be paid in the following areas on the following dates from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Friday 4th, Trumaca, Chateau Belair, Spring Village, Coles Hill, Rose Bank, and Rose Hall. Monday 7th, Fancy, Oria, Sandy Bay, Overland, and Connery. Revenue Office, Tuesday 8th, Barrelly, Thursday 10th, Georgetown, Tuesday 15th, Myro, Union Island, and Canawan. Wednesday 16th, Beckway. The missed payments will be made on Friday, September 11, 2020 at the Geese Shed Boxing Plant. All persons collecting public assistance are asked to walk with their ID cards. Persons will only be allowed to collect public assistance for a maximum of two persons. The general public is asked to note that the electoral office will be closed from 3.30 p.m. on the following days to facilitate staff training, Tuesday 8th September and Thursday 10th September 2020. Any inconvenience caused is greatly regretted. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines maintains that there be a single government school in Canwan that follows the approved national curriculum as cited in Section 122 of the Education Act, Chapter 202 of the Revised Laws of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The national curriculum caters for the needs of children at the primary level. This position was previously communicated to operators of Pelican School and other stakeholders. The government has made efforts to collaborate with the Pelican School to achieve a seamless transition in the transfer of students. The government recognizes and appreciates the contributions of the Pelican School and the investors to education in the flourishing island of Kanoan and anticipates the continued mutually beneficial working relationship. Residents of Kanoan are kindly asked to make arrangements for their children to be registered at the Kanoan Government School for the 2020-2021 academic year. Permission is being granted for students transferring from the Pelican School to wear their uniform until the end of Term 1. Let us all work together recognizing that universal access to education is still the primary objective amid these globally challenging times. For more information, you can visit our Facebook page at API SVG. We've come to the end of this evening's presentation. We hope we kept you informed for the past hour. Remember, we are still going through a pandemic, so please continue to maintain the protocols by the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment. Join us again on Saturday for the API's magazine program, Inside Story. I'm Nadia Slater, and I'll see you then.